Well, hello there, my name's Bob and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. This episode is going to look at a cast iron brazing job that failed. Well, we eventually got it right in the end, but it failed in the beginning and explore the reasons why that happened and maybe be of help to you if you've got a cast iron brazing job that you want to do. This is our two-ton arbor press. Several years ago I managed to crack the die plate. At least it was a nice clean break which will be easy to realign. It's a four position die plate mainly used for broaching and the like. It's all repaired now. It's the brazing repair of this crack that I want to talk about in this video. This is my first attempt at the repair. Having aligned and clamped the die plate, I used a burr in a drill to groove out both sides of the crack in preparation for the repair. Having ground out the joint on one side, I moved on to brazing, starting by using the oxyacetylene torch to preheat the casting. The plate is a full 1 inch thick, 25.4mm in Australian terms, so a fair bit of preheating is required. Those fine sparks that you might see fly out occasionally result from the burning up of carbon rich particles of cast iron left over from the grinding out of the casting. For brazing to be effective I need to preheat the cast iron to a dull red and I'm using the oxy torch for this purpose. Brazing requires the application of a flux and the product I will be using is a CIG product Comwell Copper and Brass Flux in combination with flux coated nickel bronze rods. With the preheating done I moved on to brazing the joint. For brazing the torch flame is adjusted to be slightly oxidising. Filler rods for brazing contain zinc which can form a gas in the molten pool. The oxidising flame stops the zinc from forming bubbles in the repair. I'm using flux coated nickel bronze rods but adding extra flux by dipping them in flux powder as I go. At this stage I'm applying the additional flux as a powder however I could also mix the powder with some water and apply that as a thick paste. It's hard to see from the video position but the work surface is raised at the camera end so that the casting joint is running downhill. The brazing sequence I follow is to start from the lower end effectively forming a brass dam wall. The idea is to minimise the loss of brazed material that would flow out the open ends of the groove.
And finally, the first side of the brake is done. Off camera, I've turned the die plate over and grooved out the other side of the repair with a burr. The plate is still warm, so it does not take as long this time to preheat the joint back to a dull red. Once again, the carbon rich particles of cast iron from the grinding provide an occasional display of sparkles. Preheating done and armed again with the flux coated nickel bronze rod, I proceeded to braze the other side of the joint. With the flux coated nickel bronze rod used up, I reverted to uncoated bronze rods, heating the end and dipping that in powdered flux before applying. On all four sides of the repair I have built the brazed material above the surface of the die plate so that I will have plenty to machine back level with the plate surface. With the brazing finished the die plate is wrapped in a fire blanket to slowly cool down. Here I have set the die plate up in the bench mill and I am using a 20mm diameter end mill to machine the braze joint down to the level of the existing plate. All seems to be going well, but little did I know what fate held in store for me and our die plate repair. Suddenly, the brazed on ear breaks away and all my efforts thus far on this job have been wasted. Looking at the broken joint, can you see what has gone wrong? First off, the brazed joint has broken away relatively cleanly from the rest of the die plate. I would suggest that the problem there was that I did not get the body of the die plate hot enough to ensure that the bronze fused with the cast iron. Secondly, I should have made sure the groove on the second side went down into the braze joint on the first side. There's quite a gap there between the two braze joints. Second go at the braze repair of the die plate, and this time I did not muck around with the preparation. I cut deep on both sides of the joint, not just to properly V it out, but also because I wanted to remove all of the old braze repair. With the cut down of the joint, I of course lost all the ability to use the original crack to set the alignment. Not to worry however, it is a simple enough casting, so the plate diameter ensuring the brooch gaps were even on both sides sufficed. This time, instead of using the welding tip, I'm using the heating torch for the preheat.
and once again I move from preheating to brazing the joint. Setting the torch up with an oxidising flame. I really must invest in some filters for the camera so that you get a better view. And clutching a short length of flux coated nickel bronze rod and a pair of pliers. After all, nothing wasted here. I start the brazing process, again building a dam wall at the lower end of the joint. This time I've made a paste of the flux powder in water and I apply this as well as I continue to braze the joint using uncoated bronze rods. Even when I'm not adding filler to the joint, I keep sweeping the torch across it to keep the temperature up. Not that obvious in the video, but I also dip the uncoated bronze in flux powder every now and then. Introducing a fresh rod, I will heat the end of it first and dip that in the flux powder before adding it to the repair. Each time I add a filler rod, I need to melt it into the surface without having the existing bronze flow out like lava from the joint. So, brazing a joint like this is a slow and steady process, not the dip 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 that occurs with welding. Once again, my aim is to finish the braze repair above the die plate surfaces so that I have plenty of material to machine it back in line with the plate surface. Off camera, I have brazed up the other side of the joint. Once again, I have mounted the die plate on the table of the bench mill and I am again using a 20mm diameter end mill to machine the joint level with the die plate face. I could use a face mill instead of the end mill to machine the surface, but the joint is not that big and the side of the end mill will also be used to clean up the die plate channels as well. I'm going to blast through the machining of the die plate top face, it gets a bit repetitive after a while, and I'll leave the video of the rest of the machining process in the White Dog Garage archives. Suffice to say, toing and froing with the mill can be a little boring, but and this time it's a happy butt. The braze job held up well to the machining process and no cracks or breaks occurred. Wonderful. Here is the finished repair, ready to go back in the press. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're doing a brazing job of your own, I hope you've learned something from my mistakes. Got any thoughts on the jobs or questions? Hit me up in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to meeting you again on the next episode from the White Dog Garage. Speaking of which, if you've not already subscribed, well, hit the subscribe button that will appear on the screen. And make sure you ding the bell to be notified the next time a video is released from the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. Bye.